Hey, it's Phil from Zaid Comics back with another Arcades and Comics video. And this week we have another ultra rare arcade game never before released to the public. And let's get into it. Now, if you're from the 90s, you were in arcades back then. Even if you had home consoles, you know all about Primal Rage. And that within itself could be a whole video. Probably the biggest fighter in 1994 used maquettes. If you love dinosaurs, then you love this game. But we are talking about the sequel, never released, never played in an arcade. You cannot find it anywhere else but the Galloping Ghost Primal Rage 2. This game really takes its predecessor to the whole nother level. Now, Primal Rage 1, like I said, super popular, was a huge money draw in 94. It led to console versions on 10 different platforms. It had comics, it had a novel, it had toys, board games, uh, you name it. This had uh, the merch. There was a bunch of merch for this bad boy. So of course, Atari wanted to make a sequel uh, because fighting games were really popular at this time. And this had the unique aspect of actually using stop motion with clay maquettes. So it actually looked pretty good. And the sequel, we got improved frame rates and the vision from someone who was very familiar with fighting games, a man called Chris Tang who at the time of Primal Rage 1 was actually working on the game, testing it, but going forward with Primal Rage 2, he had a lot of creative control from the start, making this uh, even more of, of a fighting game than Primal Rage 1. You went from the four button layout in the first game to a six button layout where fighting game players were more comfortable with. And just playing the first one to the second one, you could see how much it had improved in the flow of the controls. Now you're probably saying, Phil, this game looks awesome. Why did it never come out? Well, a lot of stuff happened. You know, this game was really expensive. They gave the group at Atari 2.3, I believe, million uh, for this arcade. It had eight fighters plus more, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, each character had its own maquette and had to be filmed stop motion. So they said that from conception of a character, which would be a drawing, to full pl being playable in the game was five to seven months. And so this ran over schedule, right? It was scheduled to release in 96, which that never happened uh, because of the delays. And then at the same time, because it took so long, uh, Atari actually went under, was bought by Midway and the direct competitor to Primal Rage was, of course, owned by Midway, published by Midway, and that was Mortal Kombat. After Midway bought Atari, the game was in development for a little bit longer until it was canned by Midway. Uh, unfortunately, Chris Tang never was able to see this thing played by Mass America in the arcades because it never came out. So the rarity of this game, how did the Galloping Ghost come to have it? Well, it's said that this game is so rare that even in the late 90s, there was said to only be two boards in, known in existence. One by uh, a developer and the other one was just vanished and out there in the ether. Collectors were trying to track this down for, <laughs> it seemed like decades, right around 15 years probably. And uh, no one knew that the guy who had it was none other than Tom Brady. No, not, not that Tom Brady. Uh, Tom Brady, Brady, you guys probably have not heard about. Maybe you have MK Tom Brady, AKA Bill Menudis. Now, Bill is a uh, the fighting game connoisseur. He is a Mortal Kombat 9 player. And I met him probably in like 2000, 2011, when I was going around with the 
team of the arcade, Galloping Ghost Arcade, Team GGA, to fighting game tournaments. Uh, we would go to, to across the country, Ohio, Tennessee, Atlanta, uh, Vegas for Evolution, which is the big fighting game tournament. And Bill was a staple in the NRS community. Uh, he was a high level player. He was known for being the best Sub-Zero player in Mortal Kombat 9. And I like to add that I did babality his ass in the first game of a set, which he came back and and beat me, but, uh, but it happened. No one really knew that he had this gem and he has a video on his channel talking about uh, how he acquired it. It seemed very seedy. He was contacted on eBay by someone who had this board. And when he did buy the arcade board for Primal Rage 2 off of this person, they told him to never contact him again about this and to probably not tell anyone for 10 years. And that's what he did. He, he didn't tell anybody that he had this thing for 10 years. Tom Brady uh, came to us in 2014 and said he wanted to sell this. Doc, my boss, of course, was very interested. This this game probably had never been played uh, by more than 30 people, besides people that did get to play early test versions of this. But this version that we have is, it's, it's a completed game, basically. And uh, Bill sold it to Doc. We put it on the floor in 2014. I remember when we got it. Uh, there was a there was a scare i think that same year maybe the year later when we went to a big gaming convention and someone spilt uh, a drink on the cabinets that's why you're not supposed to put drinks on the cabinets people uh, but it is fine it, it's in great condition and it's a full game i think it's better than primal rage one shout outs to mk tom brady for uh letting us put this in the collection of the arcade where you guys could come and play it now the gameplay, like I said, it is awesome. Uh, it's so cool to see these stop motion characters uh, go back and forth on the playing field. It's it's fluid. Uh, each character has, of course, different different moves. You need that in a fighting game, and very new aspects to to this game. Like if you hit the last two buttons, the heavy punch, heavy kick, it is a pop up. It's a universal pop up, so you could juggle the opponents in the air for longer combos the very interesting thing about this game is the difference in the first one and the second one you're looking at these characters and saying hey uh, all of the main characters are humans instead of animals and dinosaurs so it's kind of a change in the story so supposedly the big bad guy necroson banished all of the dinosaurs and animals from the first game uh, so he could take over the planet but these human avatars could use their abilities to morph into the counterparts during super moves. And that's what happens in game, which is uh, a cool aspect. You could use them as combo enders. I really dig it. But on top of that, they went above and beyond because they already had the animal counterparts in the game, those models, because they were gonna use the super moves. So they had those as playable characters as well. So if you go to the character select screen and hold up, you could choose the animal counterpart. In the super moves, you would morph into the humans. But wait, there's more. Back at the character select screen, if you hold up even longer, you could go back to the human counterpart. This time you lose the super moves and instead, when you click all three buttons, top or bottom, you actually morph into the counterpart as a stance change, now fighting as your animal counterpart or human avatar. Genius! This takes the term character loyalist to the whole nother level. You have basically three variations to each character, upping the roster from eight to 16 and having a third variation on top of that. So 24 ways to play this game. When thinking about pairing this game with a comic, I was thinking maybe Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, but that's already an arcade game. So I started looking at the characters and I saw this awesome concept art page from back in the day and I saw Slash Fang, a big badass blue saber tooth tiger. 
1935, Chicago, Illinois. Early elements of the Axis powers are secretly working together to develop the ultimate bio-weapon. Ferocious beasts created by German occult science, trained by dark samurai, and used by the Mafia as lethal enforcers. When Tiger realizes how truly disposable he is, he rebels against his masters. Forced to fight his brothers, Tiger's struggle for vengeance and survival is about to begin. With an authentic retro video game networks, toy, and poster art by the legendary video game box artist Tom Dubois, you'll want to get your claws on Tiger Blue. Back in now. Tiger Blue is a new kick-ass comic that you can pre-order right now. Amazing art by Jose Garcia and written by Matthew Fowler. And this is a perfect time to talk about this book. Even though it's not out yet, I mean, the art speaks for itself. I think that video, the pitch speaks for itself. All the rad stuff you can get on there just makes you feel like you were back in the 90s when arcades ruled the world. This story is taking a lot of inspiration from old school fighters like Primal Rage or Street Fighter. I know Matt is a big fighting game fanatic. In fact, Matt did some work back in the day for Atari and has told me that he played an early version of this at the offices when he was hanging out with none other than Chris Tang. Now at that time, Matt was doing work on Vicious Circle, which is another very rare fighting game that the Galloping Ghost has literally just got. But anyways, go check out Tiger Blue, get yourself a kick-ass action figure, get yourself an old school game cartridge. They even have the Sega game cartridge with a secret perk. You could ask Matt all about that to grab it. Be a part of something new and awesome. And if you're in the area, come on out to the Galloping Ghost Arcade. It's the only place you could play Primal Rage 2. You won't regret it. It's so fun. And if you love what we're doing with the, with the channel, if you like kick-ass comics, then you need, you need to grab a copy of The Lost Pages 1 and 2 on Indiegogo right now. We're about to go to print. We'll be shipping in a month or so. So don't miss out. And we will see you next time, people! I want you to know it's over. Well. Bye.